Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop as we continue on with this Triple BS Knife Lock build series. So for today's video, we are gonna get in and continue to work on these handle slabs. So we've got our two handle slabs done, our left and our right. We need to go in here and tap the holes in here and tap the holes in the, the back end of this one for the pocket clip. So we've got some holes to tap and to do that, I'm gonna use this new Tapmatic tapping head. So I have not used this yet, haven't set it up. So before I can use it for the first time, I actually need to make a stop rod that's gonna be able to catch on this lever. So step number one is we're gonna head over to the lathe. We're gonna thread half inch 13 on the end of this rod so that I'll be able to put it into a T-nut and mount that onto the mill drill table and be able to have that work for our stop arm. So we've got a stop rod to build and then we'll be able to tap some holes in here. And after we get the holes tapped, then the other part of this video is going to be cleaning up the contours on here and just making sure we get a nice blend. Ultimately, I think I'm gonna bead blast these, but I don't have a bead blaster right now. Got one on order, probably get to that here for the, the next set of handle slabs that we do. But I'm gonna try just a scotch bright wheel. So I ordered a scotch bright wheel and we're gonna use that to go around the outside of this, blend these contours a little bit and try to get these handle slabs looking complete, finished, and, and looking uniform and looking the same. Tap some holes in here, get the, uh, the outside contours looking the same. That is the goal for this video and setting up and getting this Tapmatic into operation. Those of you who subscribe to the channel, I sure appreciate it. And hey, I appreciate the comments that have been coming in lately, helping out with what you wanna see in these videos as it regards to camera angles, the audio. Hey, if you've got any feedback for me to help improve these videos, the channel's for you, these videos are for you. So please, I appreciate any feedback you have to offer on that. If you're new to the channel, wanna see more videos on machining, welding, knife making, everything else going on here in the Blades to Be shop, great time, hit that subscribe button, and I'd love to hear your comments feedback as well on the channel. So let's head over to the lathe and let's get this rod set up in there. Let's get it turned down to half inch, get it threaded half by 13, and we'll be ready to set up this Tapmatic. Let's go. All right, we've got our piece of stock loaded in there. Gonna turn that down to half an inch. We're gonna thread it back about three quarters of an inch or so is all that we need. But first, I'm gonna quickly make a washer. I wanna be able to put a, a washer on top so that it's not spinning on my plate every time I tighten it down. So I'm just gonna drill a half inch hole in there, part off a little piece, make a quick washer, and then we'll go ahead and turn that down and turn three quarters of an inch of thread. And there's our first piece, just a washer to put on there. A little bevel on both sides. I just grabbed it in the vise so that I could deburr the back from where I parted that off. So there's our washer. Let's face this off, get it turned down to half inch, and let's get it threaded. We're gonna go back about 800 thou. And to rough this out, I've gotta take off half an inch, so I'm gonna take 150 thou cuts, get down to 450, we'll stop measure, and we'll take off one last cut for a finished cut, and just get ourselves a couple thou under half inch. Now you'll notice I'm not getting a great finish on here right now. That's because I've got a long chunk of rod back through the headstock and there's no need to whip that rod around at high speed. For the tips on these threads, I don't need a great finish. I just need to get the material down. The outside diameter on a thread can be within a few thou. I'm not hitting a tight tolerance. So I'm just gonna get it close. I'm gonna leave the finish rough because I'm gonna turn it slow when I thread it. So it's gonna work out just fine as the bottom line. So that's why it's a little bit of a rough finish, but for what we're making, that is perfectly fine. So there's our first 150. Let's get this rough down. And, uh, then we'll stop and measure and get it to half inch. And 
I think my insert's a little old and dull there too. puts us one under, it's nice and hot, so that'll put us a couple foul under for the outside for a thread, that's gonna be perfect. Nice bevel to start our thread on there. And for 13 threads per inch, we need 100 thou for thread depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my undercut there on the back side, and I'm just gonna use my threading tool to do that so I can get in here tight enough. I've got that thick washer that's gonna take up that little last little bit of space, and we're just gonna go ahead and dig in there 100 thou and give ourselves a spot to thread to. And there we go, we're ready to single point thread that half by 13. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a fresh insert on there. I'm not sure what I threaded last time with this one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the lathe for 13 threads per inch. I'm gonna slow my speed down a little bit. We'll try it at 380 and we'll see how fast that's moving. Make sure we give ourselves enough time to stop in there. If you want more details on threading, I've got another video out there on all the beginner steps with the lathe and that includes some, uh, some steps with threading, the thread chasing dial, everything like that. But otherwise, let's go ahead and get this thread cut on here right now. looking a little quick. I think I'm going to slow that down a little bit. All right, I like, the, I like the look of that a little better, so I've got it down to 250 RPM. Make sure I've got enough time to stop. I've got a pretty heavy shoulder. Can't really spin out past it very easily, so I think that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and get this thread cut on there. Do a couple of passes at regular speed, and then we'll speed up the video a little bit and just get through getting this thread cut. Just take another spring pass off of there to just clean it up at the top. But that was pretty much right on our depth of 100 thou. So let me just take another spring pass there at 100. Make sure we clean that up to the top. Touch the outside with some emery and I think we're going to be good. So actually T-nuts are designed so that the threads don't go all the way through them so you can't screw into your table. So tried a couple other ones and they're all fitting the same. So even with that thick washer on there, we just need to face off about 50 thou off the end of that and then we will be able to have that screw all the way tight. We'll knock about 50 thou off the end, put our bevel back on and then we'll be good. And now we got a little bit of room, not going to come out the bottom, we'll be able to get that to tighten down. 
All right, well, there we go. There is our single point thread on the end of that. So we got our little undercut in there. We got that threaded nice. Now we just need to cut this shaft to length. So I want about six inches from that shoulder, maybe about five and a half. We got that thick washer on there. Five and a half, five and three quarter inches from there. We'll bring that back. We'll face it off. And then we'll get ready to go test out this Tapmatic. See how it works. No sense in pulling out the power hacksaw to cut one little piece, so just a little hand hacksaw job. Got a little sweat equity in this one too. And now that the piece is short, I can turn the speed up a little bit to face this off. And there we go, we've got our nice little stop rod now for that Tapmatic to run on. Definitely uh, more diameter than I'm sure that I need. I think half inch is plenty, but that's what's gonna fit nice and that's the material I had handy since I had one inch. Why spin it down smaller? It gives it a nice shoulder to stand on on that table. You'll see that here in just a minute when we go bolt it in place. But to be able to tighten it up and loosen it, we're gonna run over to the mill and we're just gonna mill a couple of flats on here opposite each other just so that I can put a wrench on there and uh, make sure that we can easily tighten that. So it's one inch, we're gonna go down to three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna take an eighth of an inch off each side and we should be able to put a three quarter inch wrench across there. So let's head over to the mill, let's get that done and then we're ready to tap back. All right, so here's our setup. We've got it clamped in the mill and I wanna feed about 400 thou to make sure I get the width of my wrench of flat spot on there. So I made sure I have enough clearance here on my vise. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna touch off on the edge on the outside of that radius and I'm gonna feed over 1 8 of an inch and then I'm gonna feed down towards this end 400 thou for the width of that wrench, lift it up, make sure my DRO is at zero at the bottom of that 1 8 cut and then I will feed over half inch for the diameter of my cutter and then I'm gonna feed over 750 thou for the 3 quarter inch width that I'm trying to get on here and then I'll re-zero my DRO and I'll go in from this side. So that way even if I touch off a little bit wrong on hitting that uh, that radius, you know, I may be a thou or so, or a couple thou off center but I should have the right width of flats on there when I get done. So that is the plan. Touch off, move in an eighth of an inch, cut over 400 thou, come up, get all the way over here 3 quarters of an inch wide and cut the other side. I'm only running at 350 50 RPM happens to be where the mill is left right now. I could bump it up to about five or six hundred, but we're just roughing out a quick slot on here, so I think where I have it running should be fine. Got our nice little flat there on the back side of that one. Let's move over and we'll cut the same thing on the front side. All right, so I am moving over 500 thou for the diameter of that cutter. I'm gonna zero my DRO again, and now I'm gonna move over 
750 and that should yep that's good all right that's going to give me a nice cut i'm going to zero my dro there we're going to back this off and i'm just going to feed back over until i get to zero and that's going to be the depth of cut that i'm looking for and this time i'm going to start at this end and i'm going to feed towards the vise so i'm just going to feed until my dro get back to zero on that side So since I'm going into zero, this should touch off at somewhere about 125 reading on the DRO. And yes, touched off at 127.8, so we 2.8 thou what we're looking for. That's good. First step is let's make sure our wrench fits on there, which it does. So we're gonna be able to get our wrench on there to tighten that. All right, we've got our piece all set up here. Got my drill press table on, and I'm just gonna drill five holes through this piece of aluminum. I'm gonna drill three holes in my sample piece of titanium, and then this is what we will use to set up and test out that Tapmatic before we get our actual handle slab over here and give it a try. So we'll just quickly knock out some holes in here. Now these little drill bits like to gum up, so let's get a little bit of lube on there to keep that from happening. All right, nice easy test holes in that piece of aluminum. Here's a piece of titanium. I'm using a high speed steel drill bit, so I'm probably only gonna get about these three holes in here. When I'm machining these now on the CNC, I'm actually using a carbide bit, so I know I could get at least three holes in here, but after the second one, if it starts making a lot of noise, then hey, we'll just go with two holes and test it with that. Still cutting okay, I think I can get the third one in there. All right, let's see how we're doing on height here. Let's put this back out of our way over here. Actually, I think we can put that all the way back there, out of the way. Yeah, that looks good there. So that puts our stop rod in place. Well, that's looking good. Now we need to slow this down. For this size tap, it says I can go up to about 700 RPM. I think about 500 is probably going to be plenty. So yeah, let me just go ahead and set this to 500 and let's go with that. We've got our height looking good. Let me go ahead and lock our height in there first. All right, I've got our speed set at 500 RPM. We've got this set to go. Now, for any larger size tap, you absolutely would want to clamp your piece down. I know that I can snap that tap with this size piece, so this isn't going to fly around and get away from me. So I am confident holding on to that by hand. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, it turns on, it looks good. Let me set depth. So I need it to go to right there. It's gonna go considerably farther before it reverses. I think that is about the right amount to set the depth. So that's gonna go three minute, three millimeters past where I want it to after it engages and cuts through. So here we go, first time trying to use a Tapmatic. Let's see how this goes. Uh, last thing I wanna do is I need to adjust my tension. That's the whole point of what we're doing here. So let me... All right, very small little font on there. Let me get out my magnifier on my phone. Make sure I know which one I'm looking at here. So 256 is right here. I'm going to set this 
slippage for the next tap smaller, the M2. And if anything, this may stall out before it gets all the way through my piece. We'll hear this ratchety sound and we may have to tighten it up a little bit. So this is what we want to set to try to keep from ever breaking a tap in the future. All right, got our depth set. Here we go, let's try this out. Okay, so as predicted, that barely went through for us. So I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit. All right, there's my 256. Get that around. Let's try one more. I think that's actually going all the way through. It just taps so fast, I can't even, it doesn't even seem like it's tapping all the way, but that is. All right, let's try a couple more holes here. All right, let's see if we're actually going all the way through these or not. Or just part way. Going enough to bury my longest screw. Definitely going far enough. It doesn't, I don't think it's quite going all the way out the back. So it could be just because I don't have the depth set to account for all the taper. But I am going in there far enough to completely bury my longest screw, which is all I need. So even if I'm putting on the pocket clip, these are the longest screws I'm going to use. They're not going to go all the way through. So that is going to tap in there far enough. So I basically set that so that my stop was right at the tip of the plate and then it was going to pull it through three millimeters farther, which accounts for the taper on this tap. So that's what I've got. That seems to work. Well, let's see what this does in some titanium. All right, I'm going to tighten that up just a tiny bit. Here's our big test. Let's see how this does. We had instant tap snappage. Okay, so it did not like that kind of speed. I know I've tapped these by hand with these taps and they work great. It definitely did not like that. So let's loosen this back off a little bit, see if we can't get it to slip, and let's get another tap in. All right, let's slow this down and let's try this again. Let's see what happens. A lot slower. don't have holes as deep that's for sure and it's only about half of that screw length so it didn't go as deep for sure it did tap them all right so I need to turn that tension up just a little bit more and let's see if we can't get in there a little further Made it a little further, but not much. All right, let me try tweaking this a little tighter. Okay, I think I figured out part of my problem too. This is a different brand of tap and it doesn't go as far.
Okay, we are tapping all the way through those holes now. It's actually coming out the bottom side. That's tapping even further than I was going in that aluminum. Well, everything I've heard about these Tapmatics, it is living up to it so far. And I got a little squeaky on a couple of those, so let's see if this tap is going to go through and do all nine holes for us. Now, three of these holes are deep, like we just practiced, and the other six holes are not very deep at all. Let's see how we do. No, by going little bits at a time and back and forth, that just doesn't want to do it. So, we have broke a tap off in our actual piece. Not what we wanted to do. A little bit of it sticking up. I might be able to spin that out of there. All right, let me try a little different kind of fluid here. All right, let's go into these shallower holes and see if that works a little better. But I better reset my depth or else I'll be trying to go way too far. All right, we're gonna slow this down one more. All right, that is as slow as I can go at 150 RPM. I think these ones I have to do from the back, coming from the front side, because they were a, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch down, it wasn't actually biting on the tap. So we're going to try coming at these from the back side. Is going on. That was only half the depth. Made it in there a little ways and snapped another tap. So clearly, I take back everything I read about these Tapmatics said they are the best thing for tapping 256 holes in titanium. But so far, I've had better luck tapping by hand. So I need to read some more, watch some more videos. I am not able to get this set up to, to work for me here. And it was, it wanted to slip in the aluminum, but it doesn't want to slip here now in this titanium. It just wants to snap. So maybe I'm not feeding fast enough, maybe I'm letting it sit, maybe I just need some more practice with the tool and aluminum to make sure I truly understand how it works. But right now I've got a couple of broken taps to try to get out of here and then we're just going to go ahead and tap by hand. I think I only have one tap left at the moment, so we'll make sure we get these holes tapped by hand so that we can start fitting some hardware together. All right, well, we're not having the most productive day of the shop today, as I was able to finally tap three of these holes by hand. So I got three of those tapped by hand. I was able to get the broken tap removed out of this hole right here, not quite as deep. Pretty much used a spring-loaded center punch to snap on it and just pulverize the tap, broke it up into little pieces, and I got that one out of there. I have not gotten this other one out. I tried drilling it with a carbide drill bit, pushed it a little bit through from that back side, but I was not able to get that one out so that pocket clip on this one just be held on by two screws so obviously not one I can sell but still gonna be able to fit this together so truly struggling with tapping the holes in there and even tapping by hand on this one after I had tapped those three holes over there I uh, was just feeling all right but man snapped another tap off by hand in this one so I think I just have clearly the wrong taps um, they're supposed to be carbide taps, but I'm going to have to look and find a different brand, find something else. I see lots of guys online using that Tapmatic to tap 256 holes in titanium, so it should work a lot better than that. This titanium shouldn't be that hard to tap, so we'll have to uh, see what we can do. Maybe I'll have to go, maybe I've got to just go oversized with that tap drill size on it. Anyway, we'll have to experiment a little more. I'm going to have to get some more taps coming before we'll be able to fit this knife completely together. But let's move on. Let's at least try out this new Scotch-Brite wheel that I've got. So here's the Scotch-Brite wheel that I have, and let's see what that will do. Uh, primarily on this one, we've got just a little bit of a lip there. So let's see what this Scotch-Brite does to blend these contours and see what kind of look we get on this with this wheel. So let's give that a try. <laughs> titanium so it gets hot fast holds that heat 
So that is the fine Scotch Brite. It got rid of that line right away on there. So yeah, it's taken just a little bit off. I think that's going to work out quite nicely. Yeah, I think that's pretty easy to get some consistency there. That looks pretty good. Well, that's how that comes out after the scotch bright. So this one on the bottom, I've scotch bright. This one on the top, I have not. So you can still, I'm sure how the camera's picking that up, but you can definitely see the machining marks around here. Whereas this one has pretty nice blend all the way around. You don't see any machining marks. It looks good. I think that scotch bright is accomplishing what I want it to. And again, ultimately, like I said, I think I'm gonna go through and bead blast these. But for this one, that scotch bright is giving me the look I'm going for. All right, let me finish this one up. All right, well, titanium has a grain to it, so I decided it looked better going with the grain instead of going across the grain. So that's why you probably saw me switch directions there at some point as I was going. But yes, I am happy with how that turned out. I think we've got a nice blend, nice looking lines on there. If it wasn't for our tap issues today, I think we would be in great shape getting these together. But as it is, I've got some work to try to see if I can get a tap out of there. And for sure, just got to get some more taps on the way to be able to finish tapping the holes in these properly. But the scotch Bright, that was success. And I think if I bead blast them, give them even a little bit more of the look I'm going for. But that's looking nice right there. Well, YouTube, I appreciate you watching another video here in the Blades to Be shop today. Overall, fairly successful, but, uh, you know, we got our handle slabs nearly complete. Definitely got the look we're going for with those with that scotch Bright wheel. And uh, as we saw, we got a little bit of work to go with that Tapmatic. I think I broke a total of uh, four taps today, three of them with the Tapmatic, and then I broke one of them by hand after it only hand tapped three holes with a brand new tap. I think I just don't have the right taps. I got to go back and look at what I purchased and, uh, and relook at what it is I need. Maybe watch some videos of people that have a lot of success with uh, 256 taps in titanium. Clearly there's some better taps out there. And clearly we can come up with a better way to wrap up this video than ending after breaking a bunch of taps and failing to get this Tapmatic to work. Let's see how we solve some of these problems. Well, I thought this video needed a little happier ending than where we ended up with yesterday. So can't leave this thing with broken taps and not getting a Tapmatic to work. So I did a little bit of research online and I found out that if you use some ferric chloride, which I happen to have some of for etching blades. So ferric chloride apparently is not gonna hurt titanium, but it will eat away my broken taps that are in there. So that's been the plan. So I've had these soaking in some ferric chloride for about the last uh, 11 hours. I put them in here about seven o'clock this morning. So we're going to take these out of here, see if it has dissolved my taps and will at least solve the broken tap issue. And I also did a little bit of reading and I ordered some couple of different kind of taps. Uh, Kenna Metal makes one specifically for titanium. A little pricey, but that should be here in a day or so. And we're going to try retapping a couple of holes in here. And then I ordered uh, some more from another one. And I've read everything from go super fast in titanium, only go forward, don't stop, don't try to turn around. So we'll, uh, we may have a chance before we wrap up this video to try tapping some holes again. But I at least wanted to try this ferric chloride and uh, see if we can't get our broken taps out of here. So we're gonna pull these out of here. I've got a bucket of water. We'll make sure we rinse them and we'll see what happens. It looks really cool. It looks like it's dyeing them a golden brown color, but supposedly it's not doing anything. So we'll see if that, uh, looks like it is just gonna rinse off. And well, to stay on topic and stay on focus for this video, we are just going to jump ahead to where we see if the taps come out of these pieces or not. If you want to see the full video on how long it took and just a little bit more detail on how to use ferric chloride to get broken taps out of titanium, I'm going to put out a completely separate video for that. And uh, hopefully that'll help some other folks out there as well who may break a tap or two in a piece of titanium and just need a little bit of help getting it out. So let's skip on ahead here. All right, let's start with this one. It looked like it had barely anything left in it yesterday, and yes, it is completely clean through. And we are completely tap free in that hole. We are all the way through there. No problem at all. Not a piece left. We're through.
Well, there we go. The hole's a little bit messed up, but should still be able to get some semblance of threads in there to get a screw to hold in there. And with that pocket clip, that is definitely, I'm happier with that than having a, a broken tap sitting in there. Next time, don't try to drill and don't smash up and fill the hole with more pieces. Well, as you saw with the ferric chloride, we are now tap free in these pieces. So pretty darn excited that I don't have to waste these handle slabs. I've got uh, plenty of work into them. So I am glad that that worked. Also, I got these new taps from Kenna Metal. I'll make sure I put the part number down on the screen here so you can see what that is. And I actually got another email from Kenna Metal. There's another tap very similar, but that is even uh, more specifically designed for titanium. These ones, I got this recommendation through Carbide Depot and then talking to Kenna Metal, they had another one. So I'll make sure I put both of those numbers in there. Again, they're pricey taps, but uh, I went through and I just hand tapped a couple of holes here just to get a feel of how they go into the titanium and they just they cut uh, they're cutting they are not sticking in there at all so I just went through and hand tapped the three holes on here went through super easy so and I did not even drill those holes oversized so based on that um, everything else I read online recommended that for titanium instead of using the standard uh, number 50 drill bit which is 70 thou they actually recommended you go up to you know even down to a 47 which is about 78 and a half thou so I'm going to go with a 564 drill bit which is 78 thou so it's about 8 thou larger uh, but first since this tap cut so well in these holes that were not drilled oversized. What I'm gonna do for today is I'm gonna drill two holes with my standard, or these two I'm gonna drill with the standard number 50, and I'm gonna drill these two oversized at 564. We're gonna put the tapmatic back on here, and first we're gonna tap the ones that are oversized, make sure we've got the tapmatic set up. I'm, I've backed the tension off again so that we're not fighting, uh, not trying to solve two problems at once. So I'm going to have the tension backed off. We'll tap these two holes a little oversized and then we'll see how that's cutting. We'll go in and we'll see how well it taps with holes drilled with the number 50. If everything goes through fine, then I've got one hole left to tap on this piece. Um, I went ahead and the hole where I drilled and kind of marred up the hole a little bit, it had some threads in it, but I finished tapping that by hand and it cut really nice. We had another hole on here that was tapped about halfway through. I finished tapping that by hand. So I've got one hole left on here that isn't tapped at all. This one right over here. Once we get our sample done, if everything's cutting well, we're gonna get our last hole tapped in here. Hopefully we don't break any taps today and we should be good. First thing, gonna drill some holes in here, two different sizes, and then we'll get that Tapmatic set up. Let's get punching some holes. All right, I'm forgetting my own process here. I want the oversized holes on the end and we're gonna work our way over. So I want oversized holes there, the standard number 50s on the inside. And I'm just using Molly D Lube again. That seemed to work really well on this tap. Uh, one thing I did learn is you need to really shake your Molly D. I hadn't done that last time. All the molybdenum floats down to the bottom. So this time I shook it all a combination. Not sure what's making the biggest difference, but again, those last holes tapped super easy by hand. I'm hoping that Tapmatic works well. All right, let's see if we've learned anything. Let's see how this new tap does. So I'm not even testing in a piece of aluminum. I backed off my tension. Let's see how we do. I need to slow it down. Recommendation from Kenna Metal on this side, or this 256 tap is 290 RPM. The closest I have to that is 255 RPM. All right, so let's slow this down to 255.
Well, that cut no problem, but it appears I cut the same hole twice. Let's get our screw. Okay, that went all the way through. Looks like from a depth, probably needed to go just a tiny bit further to make sure I had threads all the way through to the bottom. Just got tight on that last little bit. From a thread, still feels good in there, not too crazy loose. All right, that one went through fine. How strange. Just the way the light shines in that one hole, just can't get threads to shine up in there like they do on the other hole. I guess just too much Molly D in there. Yep, that's what it is. Okay, so I didn't tap the same hole twice. That Molly D is just super black, fills it in. All right, well that went through there just beautifully. Tap both of those holes. Now, we are gonna check so I definitely have a process, that's not too loose. That will work with that oversized hole. But let's see how this does now if I stuck with my same number 50 tap drill size. Let's see if I can go finish that other handle slab or if I need to drill it oversized first. Okay, so far so good. Let me just make sure that I'm getting chips off of there in between. There we go. That's with the standard number 50 tap drill size. Wow, those actually make for some pretty tight threads as well. All the way through, it's just kind of kind of snug. Almost the screw almost wants to bind in there. So I think I'm better off going with that oversized. Let's finish it off. I just have one hole left to tap. It's a snug fit in there, but it is a fit. It goes. I may want to run the tap in there by hand just to make sure I push it all the way through the bottom because that screw just about wants to stick there at the end. I tell you what, even though it's possible to do with that number 50 tap drill size, I think 564 is the way to go. It uh, probably extend the life of my taps and it just feels a lot better on the screw. That is just a little bit too snug, liable to break a screw off in there at some point. All right, I feel a whole lot better. I think that's a much happier ending to this video than where we left off last time. Well, YouTube, that is a wrap here on another video in the Blades to Be workshop. I appreciate you uh, sticking through it with me as a lot of learning occurred in this video in learning how to set up this Tapmatic properly, playing with a Scotch-Brite wheel for the first time, and uh, just figuring out how to tap titanium. Definitely a little more of a struggle than I was anticipating, but once I got the, the right tap involved and just the right settings and got through it, I think I have a pretty good workflow going forward. And great learning. Got to learn how to remove a broken tap from titanium and salvage a workpiece without having to, to start over again. So again, a whole lot in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. For those of you subscribed to the channel, I sure appreciate you taking the time to watch these. Appreciate the comments and the feedback coming in on the channel and the videos. If you're new to the channel, haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, go ahead, hit subscribe, drop a comment in there. Again, always looking for ideas for videos and feedback on the videos that are out there. Till next time, I hope you're out in your own shop, working on some projects of your own, putting some of this into a practice. Maybe you're even starting to make your own knife. Whatever the case may be, we'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next video. And until I get that one out to you, take care.